Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The focus of our meditation this evening is the crowd before Pilate. You will see that we sinners often find ourselves mixed up in bad company. But that Jesus is committed to bring you back into the fold of his mercy and care. Again from the Passion, and they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. So far the text, let us pray. O Lamb of God, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. I'm sure the youth of our congregation have noticed that whenever they venture out the front door, they receive a steady stream of questions from their parents. Where are you going? Who are you going with? Who will be there? You might get annoyed at this kind of interrogation as if, as if your parents don't trust you. That's not quite true. They like to think you're a good kid. These questions aren't so much about you as they are about others. For they know all too well, from personal experiences, the dangers of keeping bad company. They received the same questions from their parents, the same warnings about getting caught up in the wrong kind of crowd. They did anyway. That's how they know. When you reflect back on your life and think of the various groups you've mixed yourself up with in your youth and maybe not all that long ago, you might wince at some of your behavior and conduct. That good kid your parents had so, such high hopes of it seemed to have taken a back seat and under peer pressure, not wanting to be left out, intimidated to say or do what you know is right, or plain old having fun, you got involved in situations, places, and with people you know you shouldn't have. Maybe you've been the ringleader of such a mob. More likely, you went along with the flow realizing only too late how the emotional thrill led to shameful regret. With the circle of friends you know get you into trouble. And afterwards you think never again, but one phone call or a text, you're back with the gang. As the apostle warns, be not deceived, evil company corrupt good manners. Our passion narrative this evening describes just such a crowd, probably the quintessential example of a bad crowd, the crowd which crucified our Lord. The scriptures record what that crowd did in great detail along with many of their sayings and slogans. Like, the whole crowd cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. Crucify him, crucify him. And again the Jews answered Pilate, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself 
the Son of God. When you take a, a careful look at everything that happened in such a short period of time, you might wonder, how were they so organized? How do they chant their demands so seemingly in unison, even united in the sick reasoning that he deserved death because he claimed to be God's son? Did the priests coach them in what to say beforehand? Did they rehearse this, uh, practice their lines like for a play? Maybe the Pharisees gave them a cue or a, a wink at just the right time. They were to shout crucify him so that it was screamed out in pitch perfect clarity. No, you know very well how this went down because there was no pre-planning, there's been no organization on your part when you've gotten into trouble those times that you were caught up in bad company yourself. They did all shout, crucify him. They did all condemn God's son to the grave. But not every man, woman, or child necessarily shouted at the same volume. Not all with the same fervor, nor with the same conviction. Maybe some intimidated like you've been kept their lips shut in horror at what was happening. But in that silence, let the more vocal crucify Jesus on their behalf. You see, they were all guilty, whether they spoke the words or not, by association. Is that unfair? Well, you thought so when your parents said you were. You might have argued with them. Everyone else was doing it. I didn't start it. I didn't do anything. I was just there. To which the wise parent responds, you didn't stop it, did you? Guilty by association is no unfair judgment. The scriptures teach that all men are guilty by association. As by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. It's true of that crowd before Pilate, too. At first, when you hear their cries and see their behavior, you might wonder how any man could be part of that. Might even boldly claim, I wouldn't have been. But when you reflect on the bad company you have kept, And what's happened when you have? You realize you would have been. And that on account of your sin, you were. For the sin which sent dear Jesus to his bitter cross, We have all played our part. Guilty on account of our association with Adam, with the devil, with one another. But just as that mob 
gets their way. Jesus slapped up in the crowd, not one of them, but tragically in the middle. The Savior says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Look at his compassion, his understanding. Jesus says the crowd does not know what they're doing. Here he describes mob mentality and says he knows that this is what sinners do. That caught up in bad company, we do awful things so naturally, we don't even think about it. Well, well, hold on. When Jesus admits they didn't know what they were doing, is he, is he accepting the excuse your parents never would? By no means. Their sin is real. Rather, Jesus here reveals the only answer is for him to forgive. Forgiveness for a crowd which heckles him on to the cross. And forgiveness for you, who have been mixed up in many a crowd of your own, each a dim reflect reflection of that quintessential Good Friday example. No, Jesus does not simply excuse their behavior. Even the silent ones have their part. Why, no one tried to stop it, did they? Maybe Peter gave a go at it, but all that showed was that no one could stop it. The only way you could have stopped it was by living a righteous life yourself, which you can't. There is none righteous, no, not one. And that's the very reason why Jesus came. For instead of getting mixed up in the wrong crowd, he dove into it, taking their misbehavior, mischief, and sin as his own. For the innocent Son of God became guilty by association, numbered with the transgressors, pouring out his soul unto death, associated with each of us. At the end of the day, when that crowd dissipated, each going their own way, doubtless there were tears over what they had been involved in, some regretting what they had shouted, others soothing themselves in denial. I, I didn't think they'd really do it. All too late. For Jesus was already in the grave. But not too late for mercy. Not without hope. For on the third day, he rose again. At early dawn, three women come to mourn. Scripture records no words from their lips during Jesus' passion. But having done nothing to stop it, the angel heals their regret with the good news that the crucified whom they seek, he is not here. And that evening, Jesus appears to the disciples who 
mixed up in bad, bad company, had denied him, scattered and ran. He tells them, peace be unto you. This is Jesus' answer for us, who don't know what we're doing either, to forgive. Even for that crowd which sent him to death, for not long after, they would gather again on Pentecost. And here by his grace, the good news in his name, as Peter proclaimed, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, about 3,000 souls, joined to his death and resurrection, once guilty, now innocent by association, association with Jesus, their Savior and Lord. This gospel word declares you innocent too, and gathers you who wander into the wrong, cry, count, the wrong kind of crowd yourself into the right one, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints through the forgiveness of sins. You see, it's not just bad company you find in the Bible. There are good crowds too, with their own sayings and slogans, which we call confessions of faith. Like Joshua, who opened his mouth on behalf of many, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And Peter, on behalf of all twelve, we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And those 3,000 who with repentant hearts received the outward sign and seal of reconciliation with the God they killed by water and the word. Not by how loudly Joshua announced it, nor how fervently Peter meant it, nor how any baby at Pentecost understood their baptism. No, by faith alone. Which means you too are innocent by association, despite wherever you've strayed and whatever you've done. Joined by faith to Jesus and all he has done for you. I asked you earlier to reflect on crowds you found yourself mixed up in. I'm sure that didn't feel great. But the grace of God offers you a, a different perspective on your past. For when you look back on that same life in light of this gospel, you can begin to see God's mercy and care for you at work throughout it all. That although you have wandered into the wrong crowds, he has consistently rescued you back into his fold. Preserved you from venturing further into trouble than you have. And that he has kept you completely apart from far more than you could ever know. Thank him for his divine intervention. And learn from the places you have strayed. Not in shame, but in humility as opportunities to grow in faith and marvel at his grace. Above all, praise him in this congregation of saints.
the crowd he has gathered you into tonight. Where he declares you innocent by association. Righteous in his holy name. For this is one crowd your heavenly father is happy to see you in. And happy to preserve you in. Until he gathers us one last time on the final day. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.